House House Cambo Warriors. It's John here for Planet Cambo with the Planet Cambo Frogcast. I'm here with Omar Gomez, who is a Cambo practitioner. Omar and I have had a few chats and he's told me some very interesting things about his journey and about Cambo. So I thought it would be fantastic to get him on the podcast. So welcome, Omar. Hi. Um, hi, internet uh, world out there. And uh, thanks for having me on, John. Yeah, you're welcome. So I think, I think the best thing maybe if you just tell us a little bit about your history. Um, I know you've already told that to me, but I think our listeners will be very interested and just talk a bit about your journey to give them an idea of who you are and where you come from. I'll try to give you the abbreviated journey because, uh, as you know, once, uh, once you get into uh, the healing journey, it's a, it's a continuous stretch of road. Um, so it all happened in the year 2004. I left, I was living in, a, in an island in the Caribbean and I owned a scuba dive shop. And I ended up uh, jumping on a boat in, Colombian, go, in Colombia, going up the Amazon River. And I got off in Iquitos. And I ventured out to the, uh, to the jungle. And I, I worked with um, a lady out there by the name of Norma Panduro an incredibly strong, strong, strong um, shaman. And I was working with the plant medicine, Awayaska. And in the year 2011, um, well, that same year, um, that same time when I left the healing center, I was granted, given a piece of land out there. Uh, it was 10 hectares, pretty large. And it was all divine. It was all meant to be. All of this came to me in a ceremony and uh, all the all the planets lined up and um in the year 2011 i went there to start working on the land at first i was just going to do a permaculture site and grow cacao that's what i was really going for exportation of cacao and uh i decided to fulfill my 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 contract that i had signed with the mother vine in the year 2004 and that was to build a healing center and one of the gentlemen that uh, I asked to help me get to know the jungle, to teach me about what plants to cut, what plants not to cut, um, how, to, how to build in the jungle, um, that was a Matse. And the Matse's uh, name was Don Jimenez. And he was the one that uh, did his did the first Cambo ceremony on me. And I remember it so well. We did it uh, right around in the evening because he was going to uh, right around uh, sunset because he wanted to take us out in the jungle and uh, communicate and see what he saw. So, I'm oh, so sorry. It cut off. I was gone for ages there. I didn't hear any of that. I do apologize. But it's, it's recording, so um, I think we can continue because I've heard your story anyway. So I do apologise, listeners. My internet cut off there and I was gone for a while. So if you just carry on, Omar. Okay. Yeah. So uh, where was I at? Yeah, so I was at my first Cambo experience. In fact, in Peru, we call it Sapo. Yeah. Cambo actually comes from the Brazilian side, as you know, the fierce um, jaguar nation, otherwise known as the Matseis. They occupy Brazil and Peru, and they own, uh, they occupy, they're, they're the tribe that occupies the most territory in the Amazon. So we call it Sapo, and I was working with uh, Matze on the Peruvian side. And so this was my first time trying Sapo, and it was around uh, sunset, because he wanted us to go into the jungle, and he wanted to show us how, you know, how they use the medicine for hunting. And... We were, we were in tents. We didn't even have any tambos or bungalows or any, anything like that. So uh, everybody would go first, and I was standing up next to a tree. And uh, you also have to realize that the Matseis, you know, if they're true Matseis, they, they speak very broken Spanish. I'm fluent in Spanish. I'm Mexican. So Spanish is not a problem, but when they speak to you in a broken Spanish, which is like half Matze, half Spanish, and there's also jungle Spanish, which is very difficult to understand. So 
was telling me to sit down and I didn't quite understand him very well. And um, I said, no, no, I can stand up. And uh, he said, are you ready? And I said, yeah. And uh, he said, all right, let me see your shoulder. And he went, bop, 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 bop. And he did the whole thing, John. It took him, literally, it took him from the start of the ceremony, I mean, from the start to the end, it took him about four minutes. It was the fastest dosing I've ever seen in my life. And I just obviously, as we all know, just felt like um, the rush, the heartbeat, the flushing. And then all of a sudden, I was in this vision where I was in a canoe and I was uh, paddling down a stream and there was monkeys and there was koala, um, koalas, uh, slots, and there was toucans and all of these jungle animals. And then all of a sudden, uh, I open up my eyes and I see that I'm on the ground, my head's bleeding and I'm screaming for some toilet paper because I had to take a shit right there. Mm -hmm. So what had happened was that I had passed out, fell forward, and I hit my head on a tree. But I had such a connection to the medicine that was just, it was, it was incredible. It was incredible, the, the connection that I received. And obviously, I purged and purged and coming out of both ends. And yeah, so that was my first uh, real deal Cambo experience. And that night, we went walking in the jungle. And he showed us things, you know, and showed us things and, and you know, that they're normally camouflaged, right? Everything in the jungles, it's, it's a law, you know, it's, it's, it's the law of being camouflaged. If you're not camouflaged, you're eaten. Mm -hmm. So he showed us how the, um, the, uh, the musikis, the, mon the monkeys at night, how, how they hide and um, how the howler monkeys are moving out around. Uh, he showed us uh, armadillos. Believe it or not, there's armadillos in the Amazon. He showed us um, how the anteaters crawl about the jungle at night. And then uh, the next morning, I had to go into sit to the city for some supplies. And I was as I was walking out of the land, there was a bridge, and on the on the bridge, on the handrails of this bridge, was one of the. Um, uh, Philo Medusa bicolor, right? It was one of the Cambo frogs, one of the sapo frogs. And uh, it just went deep in my heart. And it's just something that I carried from that day forward. It was, uh, it was an incredible experience. And then we went on to build a healing center. And we built a healing center. And from the year 2011 to the year 2018, 19, uh, I ran a healing center in the Amazon rainforest and what we learned, so we started using Cambo with the open public in the year 2011, 2012, 2013. And what we learned is that Cambo is a, is a great ally with, um, Awayaska because it allows you to become very, um, open um vulnerable and it allows you to lose that guard that 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 fear that the walls that you put up and people were getting incredible incredible ceremonies if they you know when they had done cambo in the morning and then their ceremony at night and then after that we started working um exclusive well yeah and then after that i started working exclusively with cambo and what I do present day is I travel around and um, certify people as Cambo, certified Cambo practitioners and, um, and also, yeah, give treatments to, to people. Great. Thanks, Omar. It was interesting when you, you mentioned SAPO, and that's something that uh, at Planet Cambo, uh, more recently, that's the way, the style that we, we do it with now. Having done it both ways, having done it uh, the sort of Cambo style where you drink all this water beforehand and before you put the medicine on. And then uh, doing it the Sapo style where you don't drink the water and then you use the saliva to mix the Cambo. And for me, it's so much better. You really feel the spirit of the frog. It's almost like when you do it the other way with all the water, it, it blocks it. It feels kind of forced to me. I've always said, I've always said a couple things. Yeah. Like I said, I've been doing this around 
since I've been doing this since the year 2011. So I've had quite a bit of experience with it. And I, I've gone into the Mate community. We rented, um, we, we've rented military airplanes and gone down and landed on, on dirt fields that you, it's like out of the movie Narcos or something. Or just like, what's, I, yeah, I remember like, uh, I remember as we were circling the field to make sure that they got the animals off the runway. I'm like, we're not landing there. They're like, yep. So we landed on a dirt runway, then got in the canoe, six hours up the river in a canoe and got into a real, like the Matze. So I was able to ask these questions, right? Because these questions were always thrown at me, right? I was able to ask a lot of questions. And once again, uh, I have the, the, you know, I'm lucky that I'm fluent in Spanish. So I was able to communicate. There was, there was an interpreter there, an interpreter there, but I was also able to communicate with the, the, the elders. And one thing I've always said is that there's two Cambo practitioners in the world, the kind that understand it and the kind that really, really have studied it and connected with the frog and the kind that are just learning from somebody that learned from somebody that learned that somebody that learned that's never even been in the jungle. Right. So everybody I believe has a good heart and tries to do a right thing, but however, there's, there's a proper way to do Cambo or Sapo. And the proper way is using somebody's saliva. And when I, so I, when I went out to the elders, I asked 180 questions every three minutes because I wanted to know, I wanted to know all the information because I needed to hear it from source. And for me, what I consider myself is that I'm a medium, right? So I was able to go to the, to the origins and I was able to talk to somebody that's great, 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 great grandfather had taught him and they hadn't changed one single thing. They didn't change anything throughout that lineage. So I was able to receive that information. And basically between my ceremonies with the frog and my discussions with the elders, they told me, pass this information, cut and dry. Don't alter it. Don't change it. You are nobody to put your opinion into this. So they explained me that when you do sapo, cambo, frog venom, that you need to, the proper way to do it is by using people's saliva. Now there's two ways to do that, John, right? The novice way, right? The entry level, which is good, is that you're using the patient's saliva, right? That's super, super important. So that the reason why it's important is that their DNA needs to connect with the medicine to help the medicine to know where and what it needs to do, right? Your DNA and my DNA are very, very different, right? So therefore, your DNA is going to go into your body. Now, after you've had years and years and you become an elder practitioner with the, you know, like the Matses, they use their saliva. And they use their saliva because they can read you, right? And they can turn up the, they can turn up the potency of the medicine or turn it down. The last time I was out with the Matses, he told me, uh, how many dots you want? I said four. Four dots is a lot, right? When you have this, the, the medicine that we work with, four dots, knock on your ass. He said, no, you're going to do, you're here, you're learning, you want to, you know, you want to carry the torch, you're going to do six on your chest. I was out. I was out. I was out for, that was my, that was the toughest, the second toughest, well, one of the, one of the two toughest ceremonies I've ever had. And then he went around and he said, all right, we're going to do it again. And then we're going to use my saliva and I'm going to tone it down. He did the six dots on my chest again, and it was manageable, right? So this comes after years and years and years and years of experience and studying the medicine and working with the medicine and dosing yourself, right? That's another thing, right? These guys are constantly dosing themselves. So um, the other point that you bring up is when you drink a lot of water or cassava, right which is uh fermented yuca okay. yep. uh, um, when you drink the cassava and you drink and you drink you create what's called a false purge right so the first thing that the cambo expels from your body is all that bloated water that i mean that water that just made you so bloated all that bloatness just that's something that comes out and now i'm sure in your experience when you, you drink the water prior, you wait 20 minutes, 30 minutes between drinking your water and applying the medicine, it goes deep, deep, and it infiltrates your organs. And it gets all that 
you know, I'm sure you've seen the, 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 the radiator yellow fluid, uh, the bile that comes out. I've had people, wow, well, I've had people vomit amazing stuff, like, like amazing in a sense that it's like so red or so, not red, I'm sorry, so orange or so yellow. Um, recently here in the United States, I worked with an ex-heroin addict, a uh, heroin addict of 15 years and he's been clean for over a year and a half and uh he vomited something blue and yeah. we to this day we, we still don't know what that was and it wasn't his diet because he, he doesn't eat any of that stuff um i've had people vomit black yeah like, i've seen black i've seen i've seen black a couple of times i've seen i've seen black i've seen black blue brown red green uh orange yellow and that's what you can get when you don't saturate yourself with water before a cambo or a sapo ceremony, right? It goes deep, 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 and it like kind of like scrapes the walls and it gets all of that out and it's easier to get out. If not, it's just water, water, and very little. Yeah. After, very, very no, actually, little. What, what I found is that, because the first time I, I did it sapo, I had no idea what was going to happen. I, you know, I was, I was like, okay, do, am, I, am I not going to drink any water at all at any point? I didn't know. So I had water handy. I put the medicine on with saliva. I put it on dry. Uh, found it to be much smoother, softer experience. Really not that, wasn't that unpleasant, to be honest, compared to doing it cambo. Um, but then I got to a point where I was like, okay, I feel, I feel like I want to purge. I'm ready to purge. But there was nothing there. I thought, <clears throat> nothing coming out. This was probably 20 minutes in to having the medicine on and then I started drinking the water and then the purge just came and it was it was easy the bile was there instantly and that's what I found it just makes the whole process um smoother generally still it's still difficult you know it's still it's still an ordeal but uh when you drink all the water first you just feel so much more nauseous the whole time whereas with the sapo method you don't feel so nauseous all the way through you only feel nauseous when you when you're ready to to purge mm. That's what I found in my experience. So having done it both ways, I would never, I would only ever do it Sapo now. I would never do it the other way on myself. In all, yeah, in all the years I've been doing this, we've, we've done it the same way. And that is you drink oh, a liter and three quarters to two liters of water, 20 to 30 minutes before you start your ceremony. And people are fine after that. People are just, they're vomiting and vomiting. Okay. And most people, most people don't have that sensation that they, they're not able to pour, purge. Um, it also depends on first timers. People that have had sapo or cambo more than you know two or three times. Each time, each person is going to be very, very different, right? I mean, that person is going to get the very different. Your body is going to react differently. Yeah, especially if you're also doing back to back, meaning you know one day on, one day off, or like even you know one day yes, one then the next day yes. Uh, it's all yeah. yeah they're going to react very differently yes 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 i mean i've done i've i have done consecutive treatments before uh, over the course of a period of days and it definitely starts to go deeper and uh, and deeper and deeper uh, and i've noticed that with other people as well when i've done treatments on people and done it over a period of days that that it gets more and more uh like deeper layers of the toxins and the panema and and things are coming out of them for sure um, yeah. um, also it's very, very important. Like, um, so we, what we do is we use tummy vine and we use medicine that we harvest with, um, the help of our coworkers on the land. We started, uh, Fila Medusa Bicolor Reserve. So we started a reserve for these frogs. Um, as of this year, we are working with some biologists, uh, and conservationists to actually really do um, a deep in-depth study of the frog and the venom, meaning what's more powerful, the phenom, female venom compared to the male venom, how many sticks do you get from a female, how many sticks do you get from a male, how long it take them to uh, reproduce the venom, when they reproduce the venom, what strength is it? I mean, there's a lot of unknown variables. And as you and I both know, Cambo has spread like wildfire. In the year 2011, if I said Cambo or Sapo to anybody, they had no idea what I was talking about. 
And now, you know, here we are nine, nine years later. And, um, you know, I, I know more Cambo practitioners than I can shake a stick at. Um, sure. So, so it, it's also a question of sustainability, right? Are we doing the animal any service, right? Are we, are we protecting the animal? Um, are we helping the animal? So that's why we started this, uh, this reserve. Yeah, well, that was going to be my next point was, was sustainability, because uh, because obviously as it, if this does get bigger and bigger, there will reach a point, saturation point where there won't be enough cambo to for everybody. So there will need to be something in place in order to to manage this. Uh, and I'd like to think that when the time comes, you know, Planet Cambo will will be able to do something like that. But it's great that you're already doing that and you've already got a reserve, and you yourself go and actually harvest the medicine yeah 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 because you, you have to be you know you have to know where medicine comes from you because i lived in amazon for years so i saw everything that you can imagine and unfortunately um so let me let me give you the comparison the comparison in the awayasco world right with all the the the, the awayasco medicine and retreat centers was all of a sudden Awayaska, the vine was becoming the green gold. Green gold. When I went down there, it was dirt cheap. You could buy, you know, you could buy a 30 kilos for, you know, less than $20. And now you go down there, a 30, 30 kilo sack costs you, you know, it costs you over 80, you know, $90. So in the year 2011, I kind of saw that. So we started replanting the vine. It's very, very important, right? I just take and take and take without being right mm -hmm. so you know we got to stop that maybe that's why we're in this covid thing you know we're, mm -hmm. we're always reaping and pillaging without giving um so so the same thing's going to happen with cambo what's happening right now present day and i saw it before i left jungle is that everybody needs to realize that in the amazon there is a deep 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 need desire and earning yearning for money. yeah it's unfair because what happens is that the the poverty level is extremely 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 low now these people don't have money however however somebody in their little town has a direct tv has sky tv or something like that with a little narrator and what do they get they get the American TV shows and they get the British TV shows, right? And they see John and Omar living in these fancy houses with these fancy computers, with these fancy tools, with this fancy clothes, fancy cars. And it's, and, and they get very, very upset, obviously, because they're like, you know, why can I not, why can I not have that, right? Consumerism is, is you know, everybody's been a consumerist at one point. So, what they do is that they start cutting the medicine and the way they cut the medicine is they use egg whites so they take the cambo they take the, the, the secretion off the frog they put it in a bowl they add a little bit of egg white they mix it around they put it on the stick they dry it out and unless you have a trained eye it's a very hard thing to distinguish um yeah i have a video on my phone of the the jungle guides that uh was telling uh every, you know i he he made a video uh explaining that you have to be careful to get your cambo from i'm sure you guys get it from a very reputable source but um since there's so much demand so much demand like right now i've this within the last month I've had so many people ask me for Cambo sticks, right? The whole COVID thing. Everybody, everybody's asking, and there's such a big demand that they're going to cut, you know, unless you know where you're getting it from, you're not getting the real deal. All right. right. Yeah. No, I, I, I'd, that story about them, that, that we have this romanticized ideas about indigenous people, um, mm -hmm. but actually that they live in poverty and they want what we've got. You know, they, they, like you said, if they see us, they want the, the internet and the phones. And even though, actually, they're probably happier than us without them, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> they, they really are. The technology is great, but it's also, uh, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. 
Um, and yeah, they live in poverty. And when you have people living in poverty that want, want things and need money, then they'll, you know, they'll do things to get that. And uh, it doesn't surprise me um, that even indigenous, you know, if you think, well, if it's a real indigenous person, they wouldn't do that. But, I'm, you know, it's apparent that they do. Also, as of recently, um, one thing that I've noticed since uh, what's, while spending time with the Matses, first time I went there, they, they, um, they had, you know, a lot of them had their, 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 their tattoo. So, um, and now the, the younger generation, they're not doing it, right? They're not doing it. They're not, they, they've lost that whole tradition right they, they they feel very embarrassed going into so so that you understand Iquitos is the biggest city in the amazons right it'd be like the new york city of the amazons right mm -hmm. so imagine going into you know new york city dressed the funny way you know well that's a bad example but they yeah. you know but, but but they feel very embarrassed so now the, a lot of their a lot of the tradition is starting to end yeah, I can understand. I mean, I, I, I could understand that, that if you've got a young person in the tribe who has some kind of access to the more Western traditions, you know, or he's seen some TV shows, then that's going to deter him from wanting to have a tribal tattoo because then he thinks, well, you know, if I go to Iquitos or eventually go to another city, I'm not, I'm not going to be accepted. Right. Which is a shame. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a real shame and uh yeah because it's their tradition is everything um there's a great organization called akate and akate is um i believe they're an ngo and what they've done is they have made an encyclopedia and a dictionary for the matzes and um, it's put all of their language into a dictionary uh, between Spanish and Matse. And uh, yeah, you can definitely, definitely get on the internet and look for Akate. And that's, by the way, that's the, that's the Matse name for the, for the Filo Medusa. It's Akate. So um, yeah, uh, this organization is trying to uh, keep tradition and um the rituals alive for the masses okay funding okay i can't say yeah i'll have to look that up um yeah so obviously as you said you, you've harvested the, the medicine yourself from the frogs which i'm sure is if, you do, if it's done correctly is, is a very sacred experience um could you just talk us through a little bit uh, what what that's like because we we've, we've seen we'll see the pictures i personally have never seen it myself but we see the pictures the frogs you know strung up with the cross shape and a lot of people are like, oh my god what are they doing but then you know i i know that these these tribesmen wouldn't hurt the frogs there's a symbiotic relationship that they have with the forest that right. they, they're the guardians of the forest and the forest gives back with food and medicine and, and they wouldn't hurt the frogs so i wonder if you could just touch upon the the extraction process Sure. So um, the first thing that we have to realize is that the Matses are spiritual people, right? They're, they're not our kind of spiritual. They're spiritual in their own way. They're, they're, I, 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 I'm calling it spiritual, but prob the proper word would be more, they're very connected. They're very connected with, their, with, where they, with the plants, very connected with the animals, and they're very connected with the land, yeah. Um, they they go and they set up tent, right? They set up in in some part of the jungle. They use the land. They hunt the animals, fish the fish, and then they move on to another place. They're never fully, completely um, uh, depleting the land. Oh. of the animals and the plants so first right so 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 they they're they're, they're always thing right so the second point here is that automatically have an incredible connection with the frog with the jaguar with the fish because they have like you said a very symbiotic relationship where they just blend into one it's not them and animals they're all one 
and what they do is they harvest the medicine very differently than we do um, in the sense that they go out, they call the frog, they pick it up carefully with care, they tie it up and usually they poke it on the side of its face with a little stick and um, some people smoke it. I've never seen it. I've never seen a frog being smoked, to tell you the truth. The only thing I've ever seen with the matzes is that they poke it, and then the frog will start releasing its um, secretion venom. Um, sorry, by smoke it, you mean they would just they would just blow smoke over the frog? Exactly. Right. Okay. Um, by the way, uh, <laughs> once the first time that you handle one of these frogs. They are the most gentle, docile. They move very slow. They're very relaxed. It's almost like they call them the prince of the jungle, right? They're like the princes of the jungle. It's very, very slow. And they don't have a care in the world. Yeah, they almost have, like, and they've got no predators, do they? So they have no, nothing no. to be scared of. No. They're, they're kind of like, a, a, like the koala or the sloth. That they're just very their own thing and they're very sure and they don't have care in the world and you can just grab them and oh you know it doesn't it doesn't ever like get freaked out about anything you never see it like in a panic mood so you carefully tie it up they poke it they grab the secretion off the frog that's usually the best part of the secretion comes off between the head and the lower back the, the 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 arms and the legs secretion isn't that powerful but the best secretion is the one that comes right out right here right off their back and these side glands these side glands the secretion is incredibly strong right here so um then once they get all the secretion then uh or the venom then they tie it they usually put it on a stick and then put it back up and that's the, the story what we've learned to do is we've learned to do it more ceremoniously. So we go out and um, we set up like a little altar set up. Uh, it's, it's four sticks in the ground with pieces of string and um, some candles and then start singing some ikaros to the frog. And um, there was this lady that was working with us and she had, she, she, she was, she is an incredible practitioner and she is one, uh, Christina. And uh, she has an incredible connection with the frogs and she was able to sit underneath the tree where we know that they live and she would sing her ikaros to the frogs, her songs, and they would come down and they would come down the branches to her and she would just like, collect them like this with her hands and hold them and sing to them and, and, and just give them love and then tie them up. And what we do is that we take their little, their little fingers and just pinch them. And if you just pinch their fingers, you just grab them and pinch them and that will allow the medicine to, uh, that will allow the frog to release its venom. And there's almost a connection there. There's almost, there, there is, I shouldn't say almost, there's a connection there where the frog's saying, take my venom right like i said it's never it's never panicky it's never looking like it's you know about to die it, it releases its venom with ease and grace yeah in a, in a very graceful manner it's a very very elegant manner that it releases its venom then after we collect the venom off the frog uh, we mark it to make sure that we don't go and bother this frog again right so we just tie a little uh ribbon to its one of its legs that's not going in its way it's not going to bother it so that we know not to uh get venom off this frog again and then we hold it we sing to it give it some love and then we take it and we go up a ladder and we place it in a another place where it's not going to be bothered by anybody Male, uh, female frogs are larger. You can get one to two sticks, if not a little bit more, off the female. The males are smaller, and you only get like one one stick off the male. If you're getting 
if you're getting a stick with a lot of, I'm looking for my sticks. Um, if you're getting, let me see. Well, this is another great conversation that I'm going to get into the different kinds of sticks and why. Yeah. So if you get a stick, see, these are all different kinds of sticks. Let's see. Ah, maybe this one. If you get a stick, this is, I sold out of all the rest of the full sticks. I only have this for personal use. If you have a stick and right there, if you look close enough, I don't know if you can see right there. Yep. Right there. Those black points, yep. that's blood. Ah. That's blood from a frog, meaning that it was too hardly, um, it, was, it was bothered too much. So no blood comes off nothing to, to worry about, just a little blood. And that's when usually a little bit darker and they're a little bit bigger, those dots. Yeah. Okay. So Wait, does that mean that the, something was done wrong during the extraction process or just it happens sometimes? Like it's just one of those things. It happens sometimes, but most, it can, it can happen sometimes, but most of the time that's because they are something. It's because they were forced a little bit too hard to give their, I see. Okay. And when you talked about the male and the female frogs, and we, we spoke about this the, the last time we spoke, because I was always under the impression that you could tell the difference between the medicine when it's on the stick between male and female by the, the way it looks. And you said that you can't. No, you just, it just, once it's, well, I suppose once it goes on, then, you know, that's where you can tell you <laughs> yeah. that, that yeah. sting, you know, when you put that medicine on and it stings you yeah. and it's, Things you right away. That's a female. Okay. And then like it's 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 like a it's it's like a sharp sting. It's like whoa, that hurts. Yeah. That's a female. That's a okay. female. Okay. And then in terms of the experience itself, how how do you would you quantify the difference between a male and a female in terms of the actual experience? Because there's something that I an idea that I had, but I want to hear what what your take. Females on are direct. Females hit you hard. Females are direct. It hits you very, very hard. Um, the males are, it's, 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 it's a softer, gentler uh, ceremony. The female cer ceremonies is a little bit more volatile. It's heavy purging. People aren't comfortable. People are like, uh, uh, like that. A male people, male with the male uh, venom, people are easing into it. People can, can go into it. Obviously there's a lot of factors in here, arm against chest, against ankle. Yeah. Right. But, but if you put, if the same, if you get same person, left arm, right arm, female, male, the female is going to hit them a lot harder. I see. I see. No, I've definitely experienced Cambo in the, in the two ways that you described. I've done ones where it's really soft, really gentle, comes on gradually and then you know go through the process and it's not that unpleasant and i purge and then i've done other ones where it's just completely brutal just so yeah. so challenging just where you where you like literally feel like you're on the brink of death where you're just like yeah. oh yeah. you know you almost want to just take it off take it off but you, you yeah. go through it and that's really interesting that that you can't tell until you're in the the experience yeah yeah, yeah. Well, well, once different. you're in it you're in it you yeah. can't yeah you can't yeah you can't tell um sorry something by, by look you can tell the medicine you can tell if you're getting crap medicine mm. by how shiny it is ah that's interesting it's like egg uh, egg uh, egg whites right how shiny it is and how how much it gl like glimmers yeah and 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 you can always tell when you mixed it whenever you mix the the, the medicine it shouldn't be transparent white right it should be on the darker end of the scale oh that's interesting because I, I, when i get sticks I've, I've got sticks that are that look dark and i've got sticks where it looks almost translucent on the stick and when you scrape it it's like white no. very very light in color yeah um that's, yeah that's one's job for I'll, that's, I'll, I'll, oh that's very that's interesting yeah, That's yeah, cool. yeah. So you're saying you want something to look darker. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix. Uh, I don't want to mix without using. Oh, no, don't worry, don't, don't worry. Yeah, don't, don't, don't waste any. Um, oh, it's interesting. Yeah, you've, you've corrected some of the things I, you know, ideas that I had that that I'd been told. 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like, you know, I, the only reason why I know this is because I was there. Yeah. You know, that's the only reason I know any of this, right? I'm not this yeah. Cambo genius or guru or Swami or Shaman or any of that. I'm just somebody that was there and was able to speak the language and was taught. That's it. Mm -hmm. Um, the next thing I want to give you guys uh, a little, this is another lesson that I was given, right? Now, just before you do that, Omar, can I just talk, because I, I just want to ask you one question. Yeah. Another thing I've noticed as well is when you scrape the cambo, some, some sticks, the cambo is, uh, it's, it's dry. It's quite dusty on the stick. And it's, when you mix it with, the, with, with saliva or with water, it's like congealed dust. And other, I've occasionally get a stick where it's like jelly. And as I'm mixing it, it's almost like I can't chop it into points because it's so, it's so gloopy. When I get it like that, that is by far the strongest when it's jelly-like. And what, what I thought was that's fresher than a, than a stick where the cam when you mix the cambo, it's got a more dry texture as opposed to a jelly-like texture. No, jelly, always jelly. Always, always, uh, always jelly. It's always jelly. Okay, so and, 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 do you think that's just to do with freshness? Uh, it has to do with freshness, yes. Well, no, it doesn't have to do with freshness because you can leave a Campbell. I've had Campbell sticks that have been around for eight months, nine months, and they still do the jelly. So maybe maybe it's got to do with that egg white thing. Oh, I'm not really sure. Yeah. I've only had the egg white thing, like maybe, because like I said, we, we, we harvest all of our own medicine. So I've only had that egg white thing happen to me like three, four times. And that's okay. it. I no, haven't, I haven't had I've, that much I've definitely seen sticks that have that shine. I mean, 100%. I've seen a few sticks that have that shine to them. But it's more like that that when your average cambo stick, when you when you you cut your scraping it, it's still it's still resin and it still goes into that kind of gloopy state. But it's I've had a few sticks where it's it, I'm like, okay, this is different. This is like it's so sticky that you almost right. can't clop it into points. Like a phlegm, like like a phlegm, like uh, like when you're really really sick and you have like that phlegm, like I don't know how I could describe it. It's oh, I don't know how to put it to words. It's not like phlegm. It's just it's so sticky and and gloopy and gooey that it's like it's 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 jelly as opposed to yeah. snot. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, then that's what, what you're describing. Yeah, that's freshness. The what right. you're describing. That's very, very fresh. That yep. probably came exactly from like, from it came out of the jungle, dried, was put in the post and arrived to you. Yeah. That, yeah, that way you describe that. that that's yeah. extremely fresh. Yeah, and there was one time when I, I had an experience where one, one cambo stick one time we had where it was, it was the freshest ever and I did eight points on my back. No. <laughs> yeah, I took it, I, within five minutes, I was, I, it, it was over. I, I, I was like, take it off, it's too much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know that's what when, when you you know if you're if you're harvesting the medicine yourself and it's uncut and it's fresh, I can imagine that you wouldn't need to take more than three or four, max. Maximum, 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 maximum. I mean, even even to this day, four for me. That's that's I, I'm okay. I'm having a good. Well, you know, sometimes you just don't know. I was just teaching a course up in Seattle, Washington, and part of the graduation of the course is that. We choose somebody to to uh, to serve me, right? Because I always say, yeah, I will, I'll only certify somebody if I trust them to be able to serve me or one of my loved ones. So uh, this gentleman decided uh, he was going to be the one that served me. I said, yeah, sure, just do two dots on my arm. Two dots, I passed out. Wow. Right. Two dots on my arm. I mean, so this is my, this is where, this is my self dosing area right yeah. here. This is the last one that I did about two weeks ago. And so you just put the two right there and I passed out. But normally, normally, if I do four on my shoulders, um, the way that we teach, we teach very differently. Um, and the way that we teach is ankle, shoulder, chest only. And the way that the um, four on my shoulder, that's a good one. Five, I'm struggling. Six, that's uh, that's going hell and back. Are, are your points? Are you talking about? Because when you know we we use small points. Are you talking about those big, uh, bigger points? You know, like when they do the 
uh, the Matsis do the Sapo method. They use a larger. Yeah, uh, we that's thing. yeah we use the Tamishe vine. We use the Tamishe vine and which comes from Sapo, which comes from the Matsis. Um, I have some downstairs. But those, and, those, point, those points are bigger than, than probably bigger than what what I'm using. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, another interesting thing to get into is talking about the medicine is here in front of me. So uh, let's see, maybe I can just move my computer like this. So here, can you see that? Yeah. All right. So those are different kinds of cambo sticks, right? Cambo wood. Um, the end. The what I mean. What what I mean different is that the wood's very very different. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna talk about each one and specifically yeah. so it's very very important that you know what kind of wood is being used to um carry your cambo right so these first three sticks that i have right here these are kind of my yeah these are like my ferrari sticks right this is called um pali sangre this is a red wood from the amazon as you can see i can't bend it I cannot bend this. This is like teak mahogany. This is an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly strong, strong, strong uh, wood here. So what I do is I take these guys, right? Because they're very special to me and they're, um, I take them and I refill them. So normally I, I, I do two sides and then I bring them back. And these are the ones that I use uh, to work with my, uh, patients so hardwood is excellent you always want to be using hardwood for two reasons number one you do not want the medicine to be absorbed by the wood right yeah. because a lot of the times when the guys cut the wood to put the medicine on it it's fresh right so with hardwood it doesn't have as much resin and um, the, wood isn't gonna be, the medicine isn't gonna be absorbed by the wood. The second thing is when you're raping or working with the medicine, you're not gonna get any wood, right? Yep. So these sticks over here, these, this, one of the new, well, one of the, the co-workers, he, <laughs> he did it on the stick, but, this stick isn't that good because it's very, very soft. It's, it's also almost like not balsa wood, but it's light wood, right? It's light, it's porous, and you can always tell if you take your fingernail and here, you can just make a mark on it, right? Yeah. Like, I just, yep. like that. If you can make a mark into the wood that you're using, that's not good, right? because that's the, the wood's gonna absorb the medicine and when you're mixing it, you're gonna get a lot of pulp off the wood. Um, which are these two. This guy over here, he's a hardwood and most of our, our sticks come like this. And you can also see, oh, look at all, all of these lengths. This is the true length, this is what the Matses use, right? For themselves, right? Because they don't like to do, I mean, they like to put it on one long stick and then dry it out and then keep it. And they'll get like a lot of doses. Um, about this much width, that's four dots right there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So that's about 12 sittings, right? Yeah. For, for four, for four dots. But I'd say, um, so let's so I'd say 12, times four is 48 and i reckon your those dots that you're referring to are probably three times the size of the dots that that, that you used to so i'd say it's more that's more like 150 dots from from the kind of dots that we would do sorry i can't cut you off there that's a lot of dots yeah yeah so this is a hardwood right so you're not going to get that pulp you're not the, the stick isn't going to absorb the medicine this is really really nice now this is what's commercially when I'm commercially sold out there are these guys. You can always tell because they leave a little thing to hold on here. These are the ones that are commercially sold. And this wood isn't that good. Um, the medicine, as you can see here, like the medicine, it's very, very white. Look at the difference of the colors, right? The, and it's got nothing to do with the wood, right? Yeah, I see. 
right there. So this one, this this one that I have in my hand right now, this was just given to me by uh, a lady from uh, that I just finished doing her uh, teaching her course, and she said that this is you know this is one that she got off the internet somewhere. So, so yeah, so those are the sticks. Um, these are you know flimsy with lights, and also like I mean, there's a big difference between this, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Interestingly, that stick that I got, I was telling you about the, the strongest one I ever had. It was it was a double sided big one. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So once again, it's it's really it's really hard to know where you're gonna get your medicine from. It's really really difficult. Um, and yeah, you know, I'm, I yeah, it's turning into a business. It's turning into a business, and you just have to be careful where you source your medicine from. That's all. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. Good. No, good. it's, it's good. really interesting. And you, you just just going back to talking about the cambo itself, and you were saying that it should be actually be darker, like the darker the the, the cambo, it shouldn't be yeah. like, like a white or light color. It should be dark. Right. I'm going to hang on. I'm I'm going to yep. open up some of my um, pictures here. Go for it. Yeah. Let me see uh, what I can share and what I can't, because some of this stuff I need uh, people's <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. uh, permissions. So I'm going to try to show you things that maybe just like pictures of somebody's shoulder. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. Maybe I'll show you these three. Okay. So let me go back to this and share. Okay, that's the size of our dots. Can you see that? Wow. Yeah, they're quite big. They are big. Okay, and then, um, oh, it's not allowing me to go on to the next picture. Oh, there we go. Can you see the color right there? Yeah, yeah, I, that's 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 darker. No, I've I've, I've had many, you know, I have had Kanban like that, but then I get occasionally get sticks that are very light in color. Maybe those are the ones that, like you said, that have been cut. And these are bigger than your dot, right? Definitely. Okay. Okay. And then, um, uh, hang on. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So you want them? They should look like snots between wasabi and boogers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, that's good to know. That's good to know. Um, because yeah, as I said, I've seen I've seen varying degrees of color on the sticks. Everything from very really dark, dark looking medicine to very very light, and it looks translucent on the stick. And it, and then when you mix it, it's almost white. And now. Having spoken to you, I, I think yeah, those are the ones that are uh, cut possibly with the with the egg whites. Yeah, here let me um, here. So this might be easier to look at the color there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, have you do did they do, has anybody taught you about vomit? What what do you mean? What what people are putting by? What's you know? What do you know? What's emotional? What's physical? What? No. You know, what part of... No. I go on. Go for it. Okay. So I'm looking for my uh, bucket pictures. <laughs> so I take. I like to take pictures of things. And, and um, do do you know so... what the colors mean? What's that? You know what the colors mean. Uh, the the yeah. colors. Yeah, most of the time. Okay. Here, let me share this with you. So this is. Uh, hang on a second, guys. Ah, uh, look at this one. That's a nice one. Here, I'll. Show you. See that? Yeah. That's a really nice one. So what we have there is. Whenever you get a lot of this foamy stuff, 
Yeah. Um, here, let me see if I can, uh, uh, I'm gonna get fancy. Whenever you get like that, see yeah. that? Yeah. That's emotion. Wow. That's a lot of emotion. This is a lot, a lot of this color here. Yeah. We, you can also see that you also have some brown right here. Yeah. Reddish brown. Yeah. That's kidneys, but the most of this vomit is is liver. Yeah. Foamy stuff like this. Foamy stuff like this. That's very yeah. that's a lot of emotional stuff coming out. Okay. That was trapped within the liver. Let me see if I can get another one. Yeah. No, I've definitely not noticed that with purges. You have sort of ba a base color of usually greeny yellow, and then and then occasionally you'll get foam and you'll get like chunks, like yellowy green chunks in it, like you had there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see what's a good bucket picture. Oh, uh, look at this one. This one's a great one, man. How do I uh, erase this? Oh, Can you looks see that? It looks like a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> you wow. can see that. Huh? What is that? Is that a tissue? In the, is that a tissue on top? Tissue. That's oh, a okay. tissue. But if you um, uh, erase. Yeah. Now I'm just trying to, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Look at that. Wow. That, my friend, right there is a lot of appendix, gallbladder, and just a filthy, filthy, filthy stomach. Wow. This guy confessed to us that he was obsessed uh, with eating pork. Uh, okay. Yeah. Jesus. Pretty nasty, man. Let me see if I can get, yeah, so anyhow. So, and then I, I wanna show you one more. I'm just looking for this other one so that you can see. Um, blood, when the one that, uh, where you can kind of see where it cleans the blood. Um, and obviously you've seen something like this. Uh, this is a normal one. So you've seen this, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's normal. That's normal. That's just a, a normal, this is just a normal purge. Nothing to write home about on that one. But, um, man, I got so many bucket pictures. Oh, wow. All right, well, Hang on, if I don't find it in a second here, we can just move on because I don't want to take everybody's time and just be. Oh, while you're looking, I could, I, could, I could ask you another question. Sure. Do you, do you feel that the purge is necessary? If somebody takes Cambo and they don't purge, would you continue to get the purge or would you, what, what, what's your view on that? Because I know different tribes view it in a different way. Um, the way that I was taught was the medicine and the body know what they're doing. So if you give, say, say you, you give the person whatever it is like for you, like four points, they go through their experience, no purge, no toilet. You don't make them, you know, you don't try and force it. No. Yeah. I'm no one to force it. You know, I'm no one to force it. I've given them the medicine, their body's accepted their medicine or their body hasn't accepted their medicine. So it's, it's, it's really up to them. Right. Cause all I am, me personally, all I am is a medium. I'm just a facilitator. Right, I'm nobody to say you have to purge. You need to purge, right? That's yeah. between themselves, their their body, and the medicine and the connection that's being uh, uh, uphold uh, up being held there. Yeah. I know because I know my own experience. When I don't purge bile, I don't feel complete with cambo. Yeah. I just don't feel clear. You know that clear feeling you get afterwards. Right. I don't get that unless I purge. So when, there's been times when I've done a cambo and I've, I've purged, but I've only purged water, not bile. And then afterwards, I, I don't feel that, that clear feeling. So when I do it on myself, I, I make sure that I get it. Well, yeah, that's the whole thing. You got to get sure that you, you got to make sure that you get it from, 
Yeah, you gotta you gotta make sure that you get it from from the get go. And there's 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 different things that you can do that about that. By the way, so a lot of it is also you being the practitioner. Meaning, I give you so I give you four dots, or three dots, or whatever we decide on. And what I do, what I do, John, is that I grab the stick. The first thing I do is I grab the stick and I ask the person to put their intention into it. So they hold tension, right? They hold the stick that they're using and they put their intention into it. And I tell them to meditate, right? In the meantime, I'm preparing everything else. I'm preparing, preparing, finish preparing the altar. I'm getting everything put in place. I'm done myself with Agua de Florida. I put some Agua de Florida in their bucket. I've done all that kind of stuff. And then the next thing that I do is I say, okay, let me hold a stick with you. And that's super, 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 super important to stop there for 30 seconds. Once again, you're a medium and you're channeling this energy. And all you're doing is that you're connecting your connection with the medicine and their connection with medicine and your connection with them, right? So I always work in a triangle, right? Cambo is spiritual, it's emotional, and it's physical. I always work with a triangle. That's the way I was taught, right? So the triangle, once again, is the practitioner, the medicine, and the participant. So the three of us are connecting the medicine, the practitioner, and the patient, and I get a number, right? And I come up with a number, right? I get this intuition through my intuition, through my experience, through my training. I come up with the, med the number and I go, John, we're going to do, how do you feel with four dots? And you say, no, I feel that we should do three. I always listen to the person, right? Because I don't push people over the, pole, the edge. I always listen to that person. I say, okay. By the way, if you're not sure, if you go, okay, I was thinking four, I'll tell you what, I'm going to bore burn you four times and I'm going to prepare four. I'll put three on you. And if three isn't enough, we can add that fourth. Right. I don't like, and I was taught not to burn the person in the middle of their ceremony. Right. So have everything prepared. If you don't use that last spot, it's not the end of the world. Right. So you put that medicine on them and you see that, let's say it was four dots and you see that you're not getting the purge, anything like that. Then what you need to, then what you do is you come out with your, obviously, you know about these guys, right? You come out with both of your tools here, right? And then you start singing Eureka Row to them, right? And what you do is you take this and wherever you place the dots, you start singing to the dot and you start singing, using this and you intensify that medicine right there. You're intensifying, you're intensifying it, you're intensifying it. Another thing that I always do is, I just might as well bring everything right here. Another thing that I always do is have my, this is my saliva bowl, right? This is what I ask people to spit in, right? So I ask people to spit into this little saliva bowl with my little spoon. And I always keep extra saliva. And then what I do is I flip and re-moisture. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Right? So, so it's really, really important. And it's also, I mean, yeah, when, when we, hopefully we'll be, when this whole thing gets lifted, hopefully yeah. I'll be able to sit down with you in, in England. And yeah. I'll show you two really important things. When you finish mixing the medicine, chop it. Like if it's fine onions, like if you're trying to make pure, like mashed onions, you chop the medicine super, 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 as fine as you can, like a Japanese chef. Yep. And then you get it, you know, you want to make sure that it's moist, but not too moist. If a little bit of their saliva is dripping down, that's good. Then you know that it's a good moist. So if they're not getting enough, then what you do is... You take their saliva, you re-moisten it, and then you flip it, and they get a double bang. I see. I see. Because in my experience, when I, whenever I've, like when I'm using Canva, I, I find that it works like a sponge, in that when you put the, 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 the point on, all the active parts of the Canva soak into the skin. It's not like the other side, because it's not in contact with the skin, it's not working. But you still think flipping them is... Uh, try it, try it, try yeah. it. Trust me, trust me, try it. <laughs> okay. You'll see. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.
So then, and then, and then obviously with their intention, right? Um, the facilitator or the practitioner holds a lot of energy in that, right? If I, uh, when I, when, you know, when I teach people, I'm like, you know, how deep do you want to go? Right? Well, I want to have the, and they usually say, well, let's go the same as yesterday. And I go, you know, intensity level. And the way, you know, that the Mats, the elders taught me was how to make it more intense through the, the ikaros that you're singing, where you're singing, where you're using the rattle, um, how long you're using the rattle and uh, to, to, and what part of the, yeah, and what, where you're using the rattle. Yeah. So that's, and also what I do is I use a lot of mapacho. Yeah. So I'll blow smoke on their, on their points. I'll blow smoke on their points. I'll blow smoke, blow smoke on their crown, third eye, back. And uh, that also helps. Also, what's really good to help people purge is you put a little bit of Agua de Florida in the bucket. So when they grab that bucket, they smell that. And when you're nauseous, Agua de Florida is not nice. But I also, what I do is I take the mapacho and I blow a big chunk of smoke into the bucket, right? Because you can tell when they're about to purge. Yeah. Right before they're about to purge, I blow it. So they go, <gasps> and they're breathing that mapacho, they're bringing in that Agua de Florida, and it just makes them even more nauseous, and then they go. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you ever use rapé to bring on a purge? Ah, that's a very, so we just had this long discussion here uh, where I live because we just finished that course. And uh, this lady was for, she's done 15 ceremonies with other Cambo practitioners that got trained from that big certifying agency that I won't mention. Yep. And they were very big on rapé. And I'm like, well, wait, 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 I should stop. I said, okay. What you have to do is that you have to realize, number one, that our bodies are very sensitive, right? We don't have Amazonian bodies. We're not used to doing rapé, you know, we're not used to doing cambo, you know, we didn't do cambo or rapé or sapo or, or abuya or San Pedro at the age of 12, like the Amazonian kids, right? So when you bombard your body with too much, your body's going to start sh shutting down as fast as possible, right? With the Campbell, it's really hard to shut down anything. Once it's in you and you're getting blasted, you're getting blasted, right? But the rapé, what it's going to do if you do it before a ceremony, it's going to put you on high defense, high alert, especially if it's your first time doing rapé. Because nobody really enjoys that first time doing rapé. You have to build a relationship with tobacco. You have to build that trust, that, that bond. So... I personally don't do rapé before ceremony. What I do is the cambo afterwards. If they want to, they can go ahead and do it. But to bring on their purge now, because it's, it's, it's too much going on, right? In the plant medicine world, you're taught to only work with one spirit at one time. Meaning, if I go into the jungle and I want to do a master plant diet with uh, Bobinsana, Wairuru, Chiriksanango, Chusanango, Remo Caspi, Morayo, whatever tree, whatever plant. Afterwards, for one to six months, I can't touch another plant because I have to let that medicine work through my body. And I, I hold that true for Campbell, me personally. I like to let one thing in my body at a time and work with one thing at a time. If I'm working with rapé, I'm working with rapé. If I'm working with cambo, I'm working with cambo. I divide them, right? I know that a lot, a lot of people, um, a lot of practitioners, they do both at the same time, which that might, you know, that's good. You know, if it works for them, wonderful. Who am I to say? But I was taught work with one at a time and let that go through your body. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I have my little wrap pipe right here cool do you work with uh sananga ah uh, eye drops yeah. man those i love sananga <laughs> uh, um mac is at its best <laughs> that's it. oh, sananga yeah i have worked with sananga i don't know that much about sananga to tell you the truth i've only done it uh, a couple of times and boy that was an experience uh i yeah i haven't worked that much with sananga so yeah. 
I don't, it's one I don't of, know. For, me, for me, it's one of those ones, if you can relax into it and let it in, it can actually be very blissful. If you fight it, it's horrible. If you mm -hmm. kick and scream, it's awful. But if you relax and breathe, you can go on a bit of a journey with it. So I, I really like it, but I know it doesn't, it doesn't work for everybody. It's not, it's not everybody's. Uh... I've only had it a couple times. And the first time that I had it, my, like, obviously my eyes were just, I felt yeah. exactly like Tabasco or habanero in my eyes. You know, it was, it was... Yeah. I mean, I guess you're, and you're working with it in the jungle, for, you know, is different than when I, you know, I, I still make it from the wood. I make it myself. I get the root bark and I boil it and make it. But I still imagine that when these guys make it, it's probably going to be stronger than, than what, but I mean, what oh I made God. out of I thought literally, I thought my, I thought when I was going to open my eyes, I thought I was just going to see, like, it was just going to, like, I thought my whole eyeball had turned black. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> so yeah. strong. There was one that a friend of mine brought back from the jungle one time before as well that we did that was just like, it was like 20 minutes. I couldn't, you know, couldn't open my eyes. <laughs> And I know the, the, I've heard the indigenous, when they do it, they keep their eyes open. They sort of look up and they try and they sit up and they keep their eyes open. I mean, I don't know how they do that. And they don't, they don't squirm. They don't wiggle. They don't. Yeah. It's incredible. No complaints. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, I think we, we, we've been chatting for about an hour. Um, it's been absolutely fascinating. Omar. So thank you very much. Uh, for sharing it's been a it's been a pleasure and I, I've, I've really learned a lot from from talking to you um and I think I'm sure we could we could carry on talking and you know there's plenty more things we could talk about so I think it would be great to get you on another podcast uh Hello. whenever you have time and maybe we could talk about some other things maybe talk about ayahuasca or some other other uh, plant medicines that you've worked with Sure. Maybe ask, uh, ask your tribe, um, you know, if they have any questions or if anything, you know, yeah, if they want to ask anything and, uh, yeah, we can invite them or we can, you can write their, you know, questions for them from them. Sure. And, uh, I'll be happy to, cause my thing is just passing on the knowledge. Like I said, I'm, I'm absolutely zero. Nobody. I'm just somebody who was at the right place at the right time and received some amazing, incredible knowledge. Yeah. So it's, it's all about passing it on. I tell you what, one, one, one question before you go about Cambo and um, cancer and what you think about Cambo as a, as a treatment for cancer. So let me see. Well, without taking too long, I'm going to read you something that was uh, sent to me. Um, I'm just looking up this email really quick. Jason Canso. Uh, okay, here we go. So I'm going to read this out loud and then you go, and then you can tell me what you think about this. Um, one self, one phone call in November of 2017 changed my, uh, forever changed my life. The results containing the diagnosis that had returned advanced non small cell ad endocranial of my endocranial of my left lung. So he had cancer in his left lung. I am 25 years old at the time, never a tobacco smoker with an organic plant-based diet for the last eight years, an enig uh, enigma of the case to the medical world. But a year and a half later, it's more apparent that the reason I got so ill was to be introduced to build a, a strong relationship with Cambo, the medicine. I was living in rural Hawaii at the time of my diagnosis and working with a Hawaiian medicine man. He helped to, Im, Im, uh, he, he happened to be a Cambo practitioner of the Cambo medicine, uh, a, a practitioner of the Cambo medicine who was living on the island, who was, um, at, uh, who was li leaving that island at noon that day. The practitioner provided me the medicine two hours to prepare before her departure, two days after my initial diagnosis. My introduction to Cambo was intense. I knew nothing of the medical and spiritual wonders of this medicine. I received four points, lower leg, upper arm, lung point, uh, and one on the upper ear. Purging irregular cells. I found myself thanking Cambo as I started the cancer, as I stared at the can cancer in the bucket. So this goes on and on and on, and this is an email that uh, this gentleman had sent me, and basically it um, goes on to him 
uh, saying, you know, can, the cancer had already spread to his regional lymph nodes and sternum and spine, and uh, the Campbell came in and prevented any further mutilations. The medicine came in and opened up my block, ch block chakras, flushed my lymphatic system, cleans my immune system. So, yes, it wow. does. I mean, this is a firsthand, uh, yeah, this is firsthand of somebody that, and 25 years old, no, 27, 27 years old at the time, 27, how old is he? 25, 25 at that time. So since he's continued to work with cancer, I mean, I'm Cambo and it's yeah. completely cured his cancer. Yeah, because I, I mean, knowing a little bit about the science of Cambo and how it works and, and what cancer is, you know, is a compromised immune system. Um, that it, Cambo contains something called Dermoceptin B2, which is one of the peptides, the anti-cancer peptide. Cambo normalizes or boosts the immune system. So I don't see how somebody who works with Cambo, I don't see how cancer, it couldn't have a chance if, you, if it's used properly, if Cambo is used properly, because Cambo effectively heals all the things that, that are the cause of cancer in my opinion. So it's, uh, no, that's really great to hear. And I'm, I'm really glad that, you know, who, that guy, um, that it really helped him. Um, another question. Then, oh, here, go on, go on, you I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm sending you two links right now. Okay. So check out these links and tell me what later on you and I, we can yeah. talk about this, okay. but, um, these are two, these are two medical scientific, um, Write-ups on dermapastin, uh, yeah, B, uh, yeah, and all the Bs. Yeah. B by, uh, the peptides, yeah. B peptides. All the peptides in Cambo. So, so yeah, obviously we have the, the B, where is it? You have the B1, you have the B2, you have the B3, the B4, the B5, the B6, the B7, the B8, B9, all in, um, and it shows you the code. Cool. The sequence, the sequence yeah, yeah. code. No, brilliant. Yeah. I will, I will check that out. Um, another question has popped into my head. Something that has come up with regards to like a Western thing is that putting Cambo on meridian points, you know, like acupuncture points and all this stuff. And it's something that I, I, I have trained in it, and but I don't believe in it. I don't. I, the indigenous don't do it like that. Like you said, it's like a shoulder, uh, ankle, you know chest it's just it's how close it is to your heart that's really what's going to affect it that meridians it's two completely different things so i'm going to answer that question with yeah. three people that i talk to once again like i yeah. say i'm you know i'm nobody so i like to meaning like nobody like i'm not a guru or anybody like that right so i like to gather find my information so the first person i asked was a matze elder right the, yeah. the 95 or 95, 90, 95 year old. He didn't even know his birthday. So this old elder out in the jungle and I asked him about this. And we sat around a fire and I was explaining him, right? And he kept on asking me. So I explained him, you know, uh, people in the Western world are putting Cambo on their heart chakra, on their sacral chakra. So I kept on asking him and he kept on asking, telling me why. And then I would be like, okay, yeah, because the heart chakra, why? And, he, and he, every time he just kept on asking me why, why, why? And then finally he looked at me and said, who do you think found this medicine? And I said, well, somebody, you know, in your lineage, you know, hundreds of years ago. And he said, how do you think that medicine was communicated? I mean, the message was communicated. And I said, well, I'm sure that, you know, maybe with plant medicine and the frog medicine and it combined. And he said, right, there was a connection between the spirit of the frog, the spirit of the plant, and my great, 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 great grandfather. And he said, at that time, don't you think we would have gotten that message? Yeah. Right? So he asked yeah. me, who are you? If you come here asking these questions and asking this information, then that means you don't know because you haven't received the message from the medicine right? We received this message, how to use this medicine, we would have received the message of where to put it, right? And he said, why do you need to change things? This, this is a tradition, right? Mm -hmm. I, I do, and he asked me, he said, do you think that you're better at this 
than I am. And he was laughing, right? He was kind of being cheeky. He was kind of laughing. And I said, no. And then he goes, why, then why would you change it? I said, I'm just asking. <laughs> so that was one person. And then I asked a practitioner that we had trained that works at, and is licensed in the state of New York to work on Madrid. And she's like, you know, have no she she explained it to me in a way that said it doesn't belong there the energy the way it works it doesn't belong there so is she chinese medicine yeah right yeah. okay yep and then the last one was i uh in san diego i certified a naturopathic doctor i don't know what they're called in england right it's, it's somebody that goes all through medical school but only prescribes natural medicine yeah. and she said that in the spine you have an incredible amount of what, what's called the central nervous system right yeah. and whenever you put or touch or burn somebody's back and mess with that energy there that's you know you're, you're, you're messing with somebody's nerves so you have to be very very careful right you have to be and it's not easily picked up by in the blood right it's not easily picked up in the blood, right? Like when you do your ankles, there's, um, I believe it's, it's the outer ankle that you should, or is it the inner? No, it's the inner ankle that you should do because there's a, there's a vein. You can see it go over your bone. There's a vein that goes right there, right? So that's picked up in your circulatory system pretty quickly. Same with the burn chest. So my, my understanding, I, when I've, sorry, when I've experienced it, on the, I find the lower leg is weak for me. It's not as strong as when you keep it on the, on the upper body. Yeah. yeah. And have you ever, have you done the chest here? I haven't done the chest. I've done back of the neck. I've done, have you done back Save of the neck? Me. Save your chest for me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> have you done back of the neck? No. I've done back of the neck. That's pretty, pretty, one of the strongest times I ever did was back of the neck. That, that was insane. So, Back of the neck. Is personally, I okay. stay clear of the spinal cord. I uh, okay. the back. I mean, I, I, I. You know, you, I'm not a medical doctor. I don't know exactly. You know, what's underneath what I'm burning. I don't know any of that. So I keep, and I also like to stay with the tradition, honestly. Sure. So I do. Oh, no, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, wow. No, that's 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 uh, good. Really interesting to hear what that elder said when he said like. Don't you think we would have heard that in the message? Don't you think we would have been taught that? Very right. Nice. Don't you think we would be doing that, right? Don't you think we would be doing it now, right? If we, you know, did and we get all the messages, right? We got the message, and you know, it's it's you know, we got the message to use this frog. We got the message to do use fine. Don't you think we would have gotten this message? Another thing is, and this is just from sheer trial and error. Inner arm. It's really soft skin. I, I have tattoos here. So I, I, I used to do that doesn't work here. This really hurts a lot. And it gets yeah. dirty and you're always yeah. So yeah, yeah. I look you, for thicker yeah. skin. You sorry, you like thicker skin. Thick skin. Yeah, I mean my I don't know if you can see, but my you probably can't see, but my whole arm, I've got like a Yeah, good. Yeah. See, my whole arm there, that's my spot. My go to spot is is there. Okay. I do it myself. That's your soft um, spot. Yeah, yeah, it's just easy, just on the arm. It's the easiest one. Like I said, if you start doing it on the inside, then when you're in the process, it's easy to knock it off. You don't want to be having to worry about that. Uh, when it you're hurts. In the of it, so, yeah, 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 yeah. I'd imagine any anywhere on the inside, this would be very, very sensitive there. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, so th thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sure that there, there are a bunch more questions I could ask you, and um, I think that's a good idea. Maybe I'll, I'll find, I'll ask uh, our tribe for some, for some questions that, you know, anything anybody wants to know, maybe we have another podcast because it was fascinating, and I'm sure yeah, and, uh, our listeners love I'll send it. you, if you remind me, I have some extra Tommy Shea vine. I'll send you, see, this is a vine that, this is, this is the vine, the lady that had this, she did this internet order. This is the vine that she sent me, that gave me along with this. Yeah, that's what I get. That's usually what you get when you order one of those sticks. All right, just hang on, give me one second. One okay, quick, quick second. Okay, go, go. And, oops, sorry. And uh, I'll get you the...
right, sorry. Um, and this is, so you can see the difference, right? So this is a Tamik Shivai right uh, here. Yeah. Right, you can see the colors. Yeah. Right, it's very, very different. You can see, here I'll do non-burnt end to non-burnt end. Can you see that? Yeah, oh, it's much thicker. It's like twice as thick. Yeah, you can see. So the Tamishir's vine is very, very significant and it's very, very important for the Matzeis. The first reason why it's important for Matzeis is because they build, they don't have hammers, they don't have nails, they don't have blades. They build everything out of the Tamishir vine. So when this is green, they divide this in half and they make baskets, they make fishing traps, they tie the sticks on the roof with this vine. This is their rope. This is their string, right? Number one. Number two is the Tamishay spirit. The frog and the vine live together. The frogs like to hang out on the vine. It's like their little swing. It's like their little, and it looks kind of like a spaghetti. So when they're in there, they kind of feel protected and safe, right? So the frogs are always hanging out with this vine. And then the third, is, the third reason is because it burns very, very well. And when it burns, it burns evenly. And what we, what I, what we were taught to do is so that when you burn, you, put, you push down and you twist and it automatically takes the skin off. I see. You don't have to pick the skin off. All right. Yeah. And then so you just you put it down, you don't have to press heavy, you just put it down and you do a yeah, you do like a 90 degree twist and the skin is right there, right off. Okay. You know, because I we use incense sticks mainly, like you get Padmini incense sticks, because that's I found those little vines that they send you are rubbish, they don't stay they don't stay lit. You have to apparently you put them in your mouth and they have to suck on them while they're to keep them lit or something. But anyway, for me, little incense sticks, Padmini work, work really, really well. Um, and I'll send you one. Obviously I, don't have, I don't have access to those, to those vines. So yeah, I'll send you some. So they yeah. stay lit. They stay lit when you heat. Oh yeah, they stay lit. Yeah, look, and this guy's a little bit bigger so you can see. Yeah. Yep. And this is, yeah, this, this is all the Matzeis use. You can see the three different ones. Yeah, I can see. Right there. Yeah. So what we do, here, let me light one for you. Where's my lighter? Should be in my bag. Uh, so what we do is that we take a stick here. Let me use a smaller one. Is this a smaller one? Hold it upside down. Like so. There we go, we got it. Like that, and then you just rotate it. Slowly but surely in. Oops. Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, wow. wow. I can do four dots with this without relighting it. Yeah, no, I can see already it's, it's, it's lit. Yeah. yeah. It's not going anywhere. No. Cool. And then what you have to do in between lighting it, you cut the tip, otherwise it becomes very sharp. I see, okay. Right. Good one. All right, buddy. Omar, thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure. It was fascinating. Like I said, I've, I've learned a lot from listening to you. So do appreciate you coming, giving us your time. And as I said, I think, I think we, could, we could do another one and, and plenty more things we could talk about. And uh, thanks to you. Thanks to all of your listeners. And thanks to everybody that's in service of the medicine. And, uh, and uh, yeah. Much love to everybody during these uncertain times and know that Campbell will always protect you. Absolutely.
So yeah, thank you, Omar. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Uh, this Planet Cambo frogcast, as we call it. And yeah, this is us signing out, and we will see you next time. <laughs>